Hi, I'm Lizzie Harbin with PCCA, and thank you for being with us tonight at the PCCA member briefing. We're talking tonight about co communicating during COVID-19 and how to help your community and create awareness about compounding. But first, a couple of housekeeping rules. To access handouts and slides for this briefing, click on the information icon on the right corner of your screen. You'll see the prompt like this in the next slide, and that will help you download the material. Also, if you have any questions, please text them to 281-643-7100. And if at all you have any technical difficulties, simply email avproduction at pccarx.com. Next, we've got our learning objective but you guys can read those and get them in the materials. In the interest of time, I'm gonna fly right through them and go straight into our agenda on the next slide. So during the next 45 minutes, this is what we're gonna cover. I'm gonna to touch on shining the spotlight on compounding through local market outreach. Next, Sarah DiCarlo, our marketing manager, will give you tips and best practices for social media and how we share and truly amplify the message. Then Mark Edgar, Senior Vice President of Hill and Knowlton, and our special guest will talk about managing communications during a time of crisis and engaging with media. Last, Kim Spears, Director of Corporate Communications and Engagement, will talk about how to communicate effectively if someone in your practice tests positive for COVID-19. And then a reminder, we will have time for questions. Simply text 281-643-7100. Next slide, please. So let's start by shining the spotlight. Literally a month ago, I could not even imagine being in this place with you guys. I don't think any of us could. We're in the midst of a crisis. But I want to take a moment before we jump into the full agenda and just say thank you for stepping up across the country. Thank you for helping your patients and doctors and first responders and being a part of the solution during this crisis. And that's really what the big picture is all about. It's you are stepping up to meet these unprecedented needs. And that's why we're talking about tonight how to engage media and how to tell that story. And it's the story of the critical role that you play during this crisis. So let's take a look here on this slide about how we've told the story so far. So um, what you're basically looking at is a process. And we want to be transparent with you and let you know what our process is so that you can replicate it and together we can amplify this message and further this movement of the hashtag compounding handoff. And if the big picture is about the role you fill, what was that foot in the door, if you will, or the hook as referred to in media? And we had no idea it would become hand sanitizer, but it has. So why hand sanitizer? There's a shortage. The FDA made an unprecedented move and lifted the prescription ban that you could make this over-the-counter product across the nation without a prescription, and World Health Organization provided the formula. And then you guys came up with the beautiful idea of donating it to first responders. So now let's dive right into the process. Basically, you can read these six steps as I've been talking, and you can see that many of the steps you do on your own and then many are in partnership with us. So things like identifying the first responders, making the hand sanitizer, setting up the drop-off, you know, arranging for these um, social media or handoff events, those are things that you've been doing. We've been helping, we've had over 500 people call into consulting and ask for help with making the formula. We have assisted people in media coaching and sometimes contacting media on your behalf and then that amplifying the message is where we really want to come in and provide support. And the real secret sauce to this process is this idea of looping in the lawmaker. This is a way to strengthen a relationship with them. It will pay dividends for years to come. And if you're not engaged in public affairs now, please, this is a personal invitation for me to get engaged. Please join us, whether it's Compounders on Capitol Hill or ACT next year first question your lawmaker is going to ask is what part did you play in this crisis and you have a phenomenal answer because you've played a significant role to really help make a difference. 
Next slide, please. So this slide here is simply looking at the strategic process in a different way. Um, it talks about the amplification. We like the concentric circles because it starts with the power that one person can make with their ability to engage, to follow, to like, to comment, and to share. So there's an invitation here for you to jump in and help us get to this national reach that we're going for with this grassroots campaign by simply engaging. If you are listening to us and you're like, gosh, this is overwhelming, it's too much for me, then just support your colleagues who are part of this movement by sharing and commenting and engaging and social media. Next slide. So first we have the strategy, why we're doing this. Then we have a great process. Now we've got to talk about the what, the content. And we've got this five point message map put, put together that is simple, easy to understand. And, and the periods are very important at the end of each of these sentences because in media, they're looking for a sound bite. And that's what this message is, five very powerful sound bites. And if any of you are engaging with media, when you hear from Mark, you'll hear that it's question and opportunity, not question and answer. So it's an opportunity to share these messages. I just want to simply read the first one. We're in the middle of this fight. Pharmacists have a special role helping doctors, patients, and others. I'm part of a network of 3,000 compounding pharmacies nationwide and all PCCA members who formulate specialized medicine according to a doctor's prescription to meet patient needs. Period. Drop the mic. End of sentence. And you can read the next one. And we'll go to the next slide where we have the other three that are also powerful. I love these. This is what we do. It's our profession to save lives. And that's what our team is doing for our community. This one you can make your own. I've taken precautions here to ensure there's no disruption in serving our regular customers and we're offering reassurance. That's why we've done X. X could be going to closed door, curbside, delivery, split shift, whatever you're doing to keep your staff and your patients safe. And I know there's a lot of best practices out there. And then ultimately, you're offering hope and compounding makes the impossible possible and provides peace and time of panic. That's our key message map. And here it is. Thank you. This is the moment of celebration. This is the hashtag compounding handoff in real time in play. And this is all of you engaging with first responders. And then I just want to leave you before I turn it over to Sarah with these numbers. We can look at the last slide. So what do these numbers mean to you? 127 million plus, plus, plus. That, those are the number of media impressions that partnering with you, we have achieved together on behalf of the profession in less than three weeks. That it has nothing to do with social media. That's TV, newspaper, online publications, the amount of reach that we've had through this campaign, through this movement. 75, that is over 75 of you whose practices that we know of, and I know there's more out there, that have donated hand sanitizer to first responders. And 32, those are the individual media stories. We've had about 32 PCCA members across the country in 16 different media markets. And again, one opportunity to engage. And next, um, to show us how to engage and amplify our voice, I want to hand off to my colleague, Sarah, who's going to tell us all about social. Yes, hi everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Lizzie has done a wonderful job giving you some background of the movement that we've set up with the compounding handoff, um, donating hand sanitizer to local first responders and healthcare representatives in our communities. And now I'm going to dive in and tell you a little bit more about how you can take this movement and become a part of it and really use social media to start that amplification. So, like I said, the compounding handoff movement is something that we at PCCA have put together to really help organize all of these stories in all of your local markets and give them a stronger voice by bringing them all together. Next slide, please. So, Lizzie just shared some really amazing numbers, and 
I want to dive into one single story and just tell you a little bit about the impact and the potential that just one story has on social media. So some of you may have seen, I was privileged to follow along with one of our members in Texas, Steve Hoffert, as he delivered some compounded hand sanitizer to his local police department and constable's office. So that number one is that one story of one pharmacy that we posted on our social media channel. And within just 24 hours, we received over 2,000 engagements with that story. So that likes, comments, and shares, but also link clicks to view our press release about the story. And those engagements came from over 11,000 people reached, again, just in 24 hours. That is far and beyond the regular reach that we receive from a post in its whole lifetime, not even just in one day. And then from there, because of our amazing public affairs team and our legislative outreach that was done with this story, we were able to be retweeted by Ted Cruz. And Ted Cruz has a follower base on Twitter of 3.6 million followers. So you can see how this one story grew so much to be seen by so many people. And then if you think of these over 75 um, pharmacies across the country that have participated in this campaign so far, you can imagine the amplification that each of these stories have when they're brought together. So you can see on this map, there are quite a few of you who have started participating in the compounding handoff movement, 74 in the U.S. and three in Canada. So that's really exciting for us to kind of see. If your state is not colored yet, then I highly encourage you to start participating in the compounding handoff. And even if it is colored, you can still add to that amplification in your state. So I've pulled some example posts of PCCA members who have posted about their story within the compounding handoff sphere. And I've kind of pulled out some reasons why I like each of these posts to give you some role models or ways that you, or models that you can follow. So the first one is ExpressRx on Cantrell. And the reason that I love this post so much is because they actually tag the recipients of their hand sanitizer donation. So you can see in the pullout that I've, that I have on here, they tagged Quality Living Center and Kamek Village Police Department. So what that does for their post is it actually helps them be seen by more people because now in addition to reaching their followers, they're also reaching the followers of these pages as well. And then additionally, they have quite a few hashtags in here. So they of course have hashtag compounding handoff, which is our campaign hashtag. And I highly encourage anyone who's doing a hand sanitizer donation in their community to include that in their caption. But they also have hashtag COVID-19 and hashtag hand sanitizer. And these are trending right now. So this, including these hashtags in their posts really helps them be a part of the greater conversation and ideally be seen by more people who are interested in these topics. And you can see that it's working for them because they have 84 reactions on this post, six comments, and nine shares. And that's just tremendous for an independent pharmacy. So we go to the next slide. Ron's Apothecary Shop in Alaska. We all love this post at PCCA because in addition to tagging the recipients of his donation as well, Ron's Apothecary Shop is practicing social distancing during their donation. And they've brought in a little bit of humor with it too, kept it lighthearted by using the tape measure um, to show that that's what they're doing. And then in addition to that, they have a picture of a local first responder in their post. And that just really, it's just something that kind of makes people stop as they're scrolling through and look at the post to see a first responder, especially in times like this. So those are a couple of key points to keep in mind. And then if we move on to the next example, this one is actually on Instagram. It's from Clinical Compound Rx. And the reason that I like this post so much is because they tagged the news station and the reporter that they were working with. 
So again, it just helps them amplify their reach by pulling in the follower bases of those other pages and pinging those pages to let them know that they were talking about them. And it's also a behind the scenes photo. So it's a little bit different than a lot of the photos we've seen with the compounding handoff movement. Instead of a posed photo of the recipients with the pharmacy staff, it's, it's a little bit more candid and a little bit more engaging because it is kind of behind the scenes. So those are three examples that I think that everyone can follow or pull something from when they're working on their compounding handoff posts. And I have a list of best practices here. You can read them all and, of course, um, try to follow each of them in your posts. But I do just want to note that in your slide handouts today, I've included four example posts, one for each of those numbered ideas at the bottom of the slide that you can just copy, customize, and use for your post. So you don't even have to worry about writing a caption. Um, but I do want to note this tag your local, state, and federal representatives specifically. I didn't have that in any of my examples, but it really is a great way to help amplify your posts, especially on Twitter. So making sure that you're tagging your mayor, you're tagging your governor, and you're tagging the congressional representatives and senators from your district and your state is just another way to help get some amplification like we talked about Ted Cruz retweeting our story. And then I do have some opportunities for community connections listed here as well. Even if you've already participated in the compounding handoff, you can still take some of these ideas and really keep the story going and continue amplifying the fact that your community pharmacy is there for your local community during this time. So we have a couple of different ideas listed here, um, reaching out to National Guard leaders in your state to make sure that they have hand sanitizer and senior facilities, making sure that they have access to. Those are two lesser known groups or lesser thought of groups, I think. We've been really focusing on the first responders. And then taking short videos of a pharmacist in your area just providing peace of mind amid the pandemic by giving some updates or just inspiration video messages, um, partnering with Uber and Lyft to provide medicine delivery, and then providing healthcare workers at COVID testing sites because those are starting to pop up all over the place. So they, I'm sure they're in need of pharmaceutical grade hand sanitizer too. And now I would ask you to please welcome our special guest, Mark Edgar, the Senior Vice President of Hill and Knowlton Strategies. Appreciate the opportunity to take part in this today, but I also want to say thank you. I mean, thanks to each of you. You're in the middle of this fight. It's been tough, but you brought a special expertise to your communities that are in need. And I've seen PCCA members who are putting people first. And your actions have been meaningful and they've been plentiful. And in ways big and small, you'll be remembered for that. People will be forever grateful for that. I mean, you, you, you truly are a, a critical link in the healthcare chain. And that all kind of bubbles up together of how to deal with crisis and crisis communications as we move on to the next slide. In, in ways going forward, because the public understands this stuff happens, okay? Things happen, but your operational response combined with, you know, clear, effective communications, that equals how people remember you with a favorable perception. You know, what you want is that for people to say, you know, if something like this had to happen, I'm glad you were there. You know, you want people to think that they, they care about me, they know what to do, and they handled the situation in the right way. Next slide. And it's all part of, of uh, kind of the, what we call the three C's of communication. Kim's going to talk about this a little more, but kind of the over, overarching themes to remember 
whether it's this crisis or something, a, a crisis at your own pharmacy, say there's a fire, think of the first one as the heart. That's your concern, that you're expressing and demonstrating concern for everyone affected, as each of you have done to stay open and continue serving your main customers. After the heart, it's your hands, that you're demonstrating control over the issue at the senior level. You have, many of you have had split shifts. You have uh, regular cleanings. You've expanded your delivery operations. So it's the heart, it's the hands, and then it's the head. You're showing a commitment you truly are an essential business. You're staying in operation. You're providing help to first responders, to hospitals, to doctors, to nurses. So you're showing that commitment to deal with this emergency situation. So how do we do this? How have we worked with Kim and Lizzie to engage the media and how can you do it going forward using some of those ideas and tips to keep the momentum, first, I look at your local outlets. Identify the reporters from your newspapers who have been covering the, the local impact of the crisis. Besides those who have been covering it, you know, find the editors, find the news directors at the radio stations and TV stations. And then once you have their names, once you have their emails, simply share a message with them on the updates that you're doing. Say you are about to deliver hand sanitizer to police and fire, send them a note on that. Include the news release that was put together last week on the compounding handoff campaign. Houston, the fire chief himself came by to PCCA offices to pick up the hand sanitizer. Reporters are just desperate for a local angle. The other kind of template that you can use is to remember these three questions. What, so what, and what's next? When you're trying to figure out what exactly should I say or how exactly should I write this message, the what is that you're in the middle of a crisis but emergency responders don't have the hand sanitizer they need. That's the what. The so what is that we as compounders can supply this and we're gonna supply it. And the what next? Now we've made it and we're gonna deliver it. So you can always kind of frame your messages around those three questions. It's a good tip you know, as you go forward. Now, when to hit these reporters, it's always better in the morning. It's always better to send an email. You can also reach them on their social media. A follow-up if you don't hear anything after a couple of days is okay. Newsrooms now are just overwhelmed with the breaking news. A phone call is not so much. That's kind of the last resort. But it, we have found in these, in these local markets, you, have, you may not hear right away, but you will hear from them because they want to tell your story because you have such an interesting story to tell. On the next slide, we can talk about where to get this information. A lot of times in the, news, in the newspapers, <clears throat> the reporters' bylines will have their email as well. Or go onto their sites. They will all have an About Us category. Go to that drop down. They'll have newsroom staff. And that's where you can find either the main newsroom number or their email or the individual reporters and their editors. And then as Lizzie said, what's the why here? Well, it's highlighting your efforts on behalf of the local community. That just underscores the special role you now have in that, in that healthcare chain and even more so you're making deposits into the bank of goodwill that you can collect later, and it will come back tenfold. Before any interviews, whether it's print, radio, or, or television, I want you to remember it's your interview. You control the interview. 
these reporters, especially in this rapid environment, they're not going to have a good understanding of what compound pharmacists do. They're looking for you to help frame the story. They're really looking for you to help them say, what is this about? They'll never acknowledge, hey, I don't know. But think of what headline you want and then reverse engineer it. And then provide that reporter with those message points beforehand. With television, you can almost rehearse it before the actual interview begins. You know, Lizzie and Kim have given some really good talking points. You know, kind of do your homework, know those points. And I don't care really what they ask, but keep coming back and keep honing in on those key messages because it really captures well what their readers and viewers are looking for and what's going to motivate them. Try to avoid, you know, in areas that you're not comfortable about. Don't, don't speculate. Don't speak for others. You know, in the, in the medical field, in the healthcare field, there's a lot of acronym or jargon. You know, just talk as though you were talking to your neighbor. Don't repeat the negatives. But the final point there is a reporter, a good reporter will always say at the end of the interview, anything else I need to know? And that's when you come back and hit it out of the park again with that main message. Kim's going to talk some more about that. Kim? Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Well, as you've seen, Mark has really spent a lot of information going into the high level of crisis communications and what the key concepts are. So what I'd like to spend the next couple minutes doing is taking it to a little deeper level and specifically talking about how do you communicate effectively when one of your team members is diagnosed with COVID-19. And what I want to share up front is that this is really high-level communication guidelines. We're not going to go into specific operational steps to take. As you know, this is going to vary um, from pharmacy to pharmacy, depending on your size. It'll vary from state to state, as well as from your specific city um, to another city within that state. So what we're going to do tonight is really provide you some overall guidance and understand that it's going to continue to vary and you need to adjust it depending on your situation. So let's go ahead and dive in. I want to go back to the first slide that Mark shared um, in his communication the three C's of crisis communication. If there is only one thing that you take away from our member briefing tonight, it is this slide. I want you to remember what these three C's are of crisis communication. Concern, control, and commitment. These are what are gonna guide every piece of communication you put out during COVID-19. It's also something that you wanna keep in mind as we go beyond um, COVID-19 and think about in the event that you would be facing adverse events in the pharmacy or any other kind of crisis. You know, in Houston, we've been affected um, with hurricanes in the past. These are all principles that apply to ongoing communication. So put this in your toolkit and continue to refer back to it. Well, let's take a deeper dive into what do those three C's mean and how do we get to them specifically? So as we look at, let's go to the next slide. And specifically, how do we begin that communication process? We've gotten the call. We've been notified that one of our team members um, has been very most positive with COVID-19. Our first step really needs to be contacting our local health authorities and follow the guidance that they give you. They are going to give you guidance. They will tell you how to reach out to the CDC when and if appropriate, and they will really help guide those, that, your operational response. The other key thing about this is that they will also help craft what your message are in your communications because those response steps you take that is a key part of the message that you want to put out there. So as we start putting that message together, we're going to be gathering facts and really putting together how do we share the most important things um, with our different audiences. And some audiences you're going to go deeper with, others you want to provide a more high-level message. But really to get to that first part, the concern, you need to make sure that you have the information, the answers to answer, this is what happened and this is how we feel about what happened. So what happened? Gather the facts. When was the employee diagnosed? Um, were they exhibiting symptoms? When was the last time that employee was in your pharmacy? And again, how, what were those protective measures that were in place when, your, when the employee was in your pharmacy? Most importantly, let's think about that concern. How do you feel about what happened? Well, of course, this employee is one of your, a part of your team. And so you're going to be concerned. You're going to be um, you know, sad and you're going to be worried. So again, you may craft this message as simply saying, our hearts are with our employee and their family. So be afraid, be upfront, and share how you're feeling about it. 
as we got the concern and we've got really our messaging crafted for that, we want to go to the next part. I really what are those messages about the control? So c- control comes from really demonstrating what are you doing right now? How are we taking control of the situation? Again, this is where it's going to be important from your um, health authorities' guidance and the CDC guidance to come into play. They're going to tell you specifically what needs to be done um, in terms of deep cleaning your pharmacy um, if it's required for any type of closure. So that's going to be your immediate response. How are we responding? There may be a closure period, as we said. So an example of messaging, again, around what are we doing? Um, we've suspended operations at the site. We're holding mandatory safety meetings with all employees. Again, this message is going to vary based on how you're responding. Another key part of the control is it's okay to repeat what you have been doing up until this point, what you're going to continue to do. So if you're doing split shifts, this is a continued part of your message um, that, again, because you have the split shifts in place, you're able to respond to the situation. Our third C is commitment. Again, what are we going to be doing going forward to make sure that we're protecting our teams and our patients? And again, this is specifically is what are these new steps that you're going to be implementing? So if you have had limited hours, you may be moving to a closed-door pharmacy. You may be moving to delivery only. Again, what are those specific precautions that you're now putting in place to, again, increase the safety for not only your employees but your patients as well? So sample messaging on here is we've met with the CDC and local health department. We're following all of their guidance and what specifically does that include. As you gather this information and you're putting the message together, um, you really want to think about how this comes across. And you may notice that some of these guidelines really mimic um, the checklist and the guidelines that Mark shared when working with media because they're, they're very similar. In your communications, you want to remain calm. You are the leader of the organization in the pharmacy, and so people are going to be looking to you to really know how to respond to the situation. So by staying calm, expressing empathy, you're really modeling how you want your team members and others to interact with the situation and respond to it. You want to be transparent. And the key thing to know about transparent is that doesn't mean that you have to reveal every piece of information up the front, but you want to be forthcoming about information. And at the same time, you want to protect the privacy of the employees affected. You, of course, have HIPAA um, regulations to follow. So you can be transparent and be protective of the identity. So if you're in a small pharmacy, likely um, your employees will know who is affected just by who's not um, in the pharmacy. Um, But in any type of communication, refrain from using that individual's name or identifying them. That protects you as the owner. I want to make sure that you also anticipate and prepare for any questions that come. Um, it's really kind of a good thing is run through the worst, the worst case scenario. What are those questions that you fear getting? And prepare what your response are. You're going to be better respond, better prepared to handle those if those employee, those questions come from team members. Be sure to stay on message, the same message points that Lizzie shared, thinking about if you have key messages that you want to share and get across, repeat, repeat, repeat. You can continue to go back to those messages. And again, use this opportunity to be the peace amid the pandemic. During the situation of a worldwide pandemic, so many other businesses and organizations are going through the same situation. People are going to have empathy with what you're relating to. So again, step into it and be the leader. And remember that you cannot over-communicate during this time. During the time of uncertainty, the more information and the more regular information you can provide, the better it is for all those involved. So once you have your message and really once you have your approach, I want to make sure that you leverage your communications that are channels that are at your disposal. We've listed some of them here, and I won't go into detail on it, but remember that they're going to vary, again, depending on the specific situation. So say, for example, you have a team member who has been working on site for the past three weeks. It may not be appropriate, again, to um, communicate all of the details to your patients or to prescribers because, again, that person has not been in the vicinity of the pharmacy. That's why I say it's going to vary. The important thing to remember about the channels is that with any type of communication about your pharmacy, you need to start from the inside and then move out. Your employees and team members are your most important audience in this scenario as they're the most directly affected. So start with them first and then move out as needed to the other audiences. So again, it may be depending on what time of day you receive the notification, you may need to do personal phone calls to team members or assemble your team um, for an in-person meeting or a Zoom call, again, depending on what the situation warrants. 
but then continue to follow up with email, with video messages, with text um, as you go through it. The same thing may be true with your patients, that if you have to shut down temporarily or for a couple hours, this is your opportunity to say, you know, out of an abundance of caution, these are the steps we're taking to protect your health and safety going forward. And again, these are different channels that you can utilize um, for both your patients and prescribers. Again, not all of them may be needed in your situation, but again, think about just what are the different tools that you have to reach your audiences so that when you have that message that you need to share, you know what you're going to be able to go and reach to. Some of the key things that we have for parrots, I know we've covered a lot of ground tonight, is that we really are hoping to give you some guidance. While we're not going into the specific message for your pharmacy, if you go to our PCCA COVID-19 Resource Center on our website at pccrs.com, you're going to find a number of resources. If you go to the next slide, you can see really what some of those resources include. So on the Resource Center, you will actually see um, a letter, a sample letter um, to employees that you can use as a template. You will also see um, frequently asked questions. You will also see letters to patients. Um, plus, there are also templates. So, um, Lizzie was referring to the news releases or media advisories that you can generate. And that specifically are those in there that you can customize and utilize as you go forward. So, next slide, please. Okay. Again, this is the resource center that you're seeing. Um, again, you can access it online at any time. So our next slide is then, again, I want to kind of just wrap up. I know we've covered a lot of information in a short amount of time, but we want to really um, ask that you would really help us support the compounding handoff at any level. Again, if you're a little um, leery about reaching out to the media, start at the very basic level and just start following um, the PCCA social media channels, following other compounders, and liking and sharing the work that your fellow compounders are doing in the community. Um, secondly, build on your own social media campaigns. Third, you can reach out to lawmakers. And fourth, you know, at the highest level, you can really contact um, the media as well. Use the COVID Resource Center. If you go looking on the Resource Center and there's a tool that you cannot find, please reach out to us and let us know. We are continually developing new materials and we would certainly be happy to develop something to meet your needs. And specifically, you know, beyond the Resource Center, if you have questions or you've secured a media interview and need help preparing for it, or you have questions about social media or how um, some support in a crisis situation. Feel free to email us at any time at socialmedia at pccrx.com. That email will go directly to both Sarah and myself, and we will engage our team to be able to respond to you and really follow up with that. So as we've really kind of covered a lot, I know we've got some questions that we've had coming in. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to those questions. And so um, we'll call on our different speakers to address specific ones as they come up. And as you have other questions, I know we shared the number earlier, but you can text questions to 281-643-7100. Um, you'll be able to find all of these resources and slides, again, on our resource center posted tomorrow or attached to this webinar. So let's start with our first question, and this one is um, from Mark. So Mark, the question is, can you tell us what questions a reporter would ask during an interview? Sure. A, a reporter basically wants to know, what are you doing? What are you doing to actually help the community? And, and I think a, a good point um, before we leave this area is also to remember that, you know, you may not get the local reporter able to come out and do a story, but what was, but what was shown earlier in the presentation is that you need to be your own publisher. If you're delivering a sanitizer to the local police and there's not a reporter, go ahead and do it. But put that on your own social media. Put that on your own Facebook. Put that on your own Twitter because that's the power now of amplifying this socially. And we saw how just one tweet can generate thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of impressions. So don't, don't think that it's a, a, a win or, or, or a loss, that it's not actually a story. Social media now, especially in a crisis, is so important, and we need to leverage it. All right. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Our next question um, is um, really for Lizzie. Um, Lizzie, the question is, how can I engage with my lawmakers directly? Great question. And we actually have a new resource 
um, on the Resource Center that has a five-step process, so I'll give you the, the high level of it. The first thing you need to do is identify who your lawmakers are. This can be done with a simple Internet search, especially your uh, congressmen and two senators, if you don't know. Then step two, you call the main switchboard in Washington, and the phone number is 202 224 3121. We actually tested this today, and although uh, I'm sure they're all working from home, they are up and running their offices um, from home, and this process is working at this time. So this is the easiest way to get to your lawmaker. Call the main switchboard. Ask for that individual lawmaker. Once you get to the right office, ask to speak to the communications person or the press secretary. Now we're into step four. We've got the right office and the right person. You want to give them that 60-second elevator pitch about you and your pharmacy and then pivot to your message point, how you donated hand sanitizer or whatever it is that you're doing to serve during this time of crisis. You'll ask them to tweet. Uh, that seems to be the social platform of choice for lawmakers is Twitter. So ask them to, to retweet your message, tag Ask them to use the hashtag compounding handoff and in turn link their pages to yours. And that will close the feedback loop. And again, if that's overwhelming, the simplest thing to do is put a message into the public affairs queue and we will help you with this. Thank you, Lizzie. Uh, we have another question um, that's come in. And Lizzie, this may be directed to you, but a question is, how much longer do you think that we'll be able to really do the compounding handoff? Um, do you think that the normal sources of hand sanitizer will be coming back online soon or maybe within the next couple of weeks? That's a great question, too. And, you know, I was doing a Google search wondering that myself recently, and I saw a story from four days ago, and the story was, we don't know. Essentially, I think it's from the uh, owner's, whatever parent company owns Purell. So the answer is we don't know, but we definitely, in the here and now, this is this is what we're doing, and uh, the movement has, has legs and um, still has some life in it, for sure. I think once this is over, and there will come a time when it's over, then we'll pivot again. Sarah, I want to refer everyone to her slide that said uh, the suggestions for who needs help, National Guard, senior, seniors, et cetera. That is a phenomenal, right there, thank you. Pharmacist videos, piece amid pandemic, Uber, Lyft, others. So if you print this slide presentation, I would circle this, and this would be a great what's next. Um, other things we've learned from our PCCA Advisory Council, they're doing Facebook Live and talking about uh, immune boosting opportunities or stress management opportunities. You know, if you're selling nutraceuticals, in the front end. And so I think it will evolve and, will, and the next opportunity will present itself just like this one did. All right. Thank you, Lizzie. All right, Sarah, a question for you. You mentioned the use of hashtags um, and tagging social media posts. Is there a thing as too many hashtags? We've seen some that are probably longer than the post itself um, filled with hashtags. So what is the thought or, um, you know, what's the right number on that? Yeah, that's a great question. So it kind of varies from platform to platform. I have normally seen recommendations for about two to three per post on Facebook and around the same, maybe three to five on Twitter. Instagram, you really can go crazy. I've seen basically posts that are entirely hashtags on Instagram and that's very common, but I would generally say to stay between that two to five-ish ratio for Facebook and Twitter. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, Mark, a question for you. Um, how do I approach an interview if a reporter doesn't know anything about compounding? The key is to give the reporter a briefing beforehand, before the actual interview. That way you, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you're almost framing the interview before it begins. They'll appreciate that and it, it will help them uh, ask you better questions because it's gonna be questions that you've basically fed them. Perfect, thank you, Mark. Okay, well, it looks like we have um, addressed 
um, covered a lot of questions, and we're closing in right on our 7.15 mark here, so we want to be mindful of everyone's time. Uh, we know this is a busy time period for everyone right now, and really want to reiterate and um, let you know about a couple things. Um, next week, we'll be having our fourth um, member briefing, and um, we're going to do the topic a little bit different next time. We're actually going to be um, doing another um, session specifically um, about how independent pharmacies and practitioner practices can benefit from the CARES Act. Um, following our session last week, we received some additional questions that have come in from members, and we've also heard that there's a specific need for pra their practitioners to know more about how to access the CARES Act. So our um, session will actually feature Brian Prescott. He's our Director of Management, Management and Coaching Services at PCCA. Um, he is specifically going to talk about the Paycheck Protection Program, the Economic um, Injury Disaster Loan, and more. So what, if you'll keep an eye out for, we'll actually be releasing a recording of this presentation later this week. And then a week from today, we'll have a live Q&A um, on Monday, April 10th at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. So you're able to submit your questions um, as you watch um, the uh, member briefing, and then we'll come and address all the questions next week together as we go forward. So again, I want to thank all of our speakers. Thank you to Lizzie, to Mark Edgar, and to Sarah DiCarlo um, for covering a lot of great topics. And mostly we want to reiterate what Lizzie said at the very beginning um, and what Mark said. We want to thank each and every one of you um, for being part of the front lines, for being our heroes, and really being engaged in the life-serving work that you do. We are truly honored um, to be here to support you in this important work. Please continue to reach out. Please send us your questions as they come up. We are here. We are your resource. And don't hesitate to take advantage of it. You all have a good night. We'll talk to you soon.